My name is Jacinta O'Hagan and I'm uh, a fellow in the Department of International Relations here at the ANU. Um, we're very pleased to be hosting this public lecture uh, five months after um, looking at the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami. Um, this public lecture tonight is um, in association with a broader workshop on cultures of humanitarianism in the Asia Pacific, uh, which our guest speaker, Professor Yukio Ossa, is attending, along with Dr. Sigit Rianto, who's also with us from Gajamadra University, who's also with us in the audience um, today. Uh, and we're very pleased to be able to acknowledge the support, in particular, of the Australia Japan Foundation um, for supporting this event tonight and for supporting the Cultures of Humanitarianism workshop. We're holding the workshop in association with the University of Nottingham, the AJF, and also the Academy of Social Sciences in Australia. But let me talk a little bit about this evening's talk. It's only five months ago, it seems amazing, that the terrible events that we're all aware of um, happened in the Sendai province of Japan. The earthquake, followed by the catastrophic tsunami, were bad enough. But then in addition to that, the fact that this aggravated a crisis in the nuclear power plant in, Fu in Fukushima created a triple emergency, a humanitarian emergency, possibly unseen in Japan for decades. One of the things that Yuka and I were, uh, were talking about today is how quickly such disasters and emergencies move off our radar. We're fixated on them for a few weeks, a few days, but then the next disaster, the next crisis, the next celebrity breakup comes along. And somehow our attention moves from the impact that these disasters have had on the people who have suffered them. And this is a disaster which isn't just a disaster in the short term. It's a disaster which we'll be living with for decades, if not centuries. There's been a lot of discussion about this crisis in terms of the impact it's had on Japan. Japan as a great power, the Japanese economy. But one of the things we need to know a little more about is the impact that it has actually on the ordinary people, the day-to-day -day lives of these people in these districts. So we're incredibly lucky to have here today Professor Yukie Osa. She's a professor in the Department of Sociology at Rikyo University, a professor of the Graduate School of Social Design, also at Rikyo University. But also very importantly, she's the chairperson of the board of the Association for Aid and Relief in Japan and the, on the board of directors of the Japan Platform. And what's important about these organisations is that they have been in on the ground in the three prefectures that have been affected by this disaster. Unlike many agencies that have really kept the distance because of the, you know, the dangers of radiation. She's going to speak to us today about her experiences there and about the work of her organisations. So let me hand over uh, to Professor Orsa. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Shinji, for your kind introduction. Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, to begin with, uh, let me express uh, my sincere gratitude for your general support and Australian general support to Japan. Right after the Mount 11 earthquake and tsunami, Australia deployed 75 rescue workers and two search dogs to Minami Sanriku in Miyagi Prefecture. That is as early as March 16th. And your Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, was the first foreign leader to visit disaster area on April 23rd. It was very touching, very touching. And we were very much grateful for the sympathy you have shown to us. And I also would like to express my gratitude for the host of this public lecture who kindly invited me to Australia. This is my first time to be here. Uh, the Department of International Relations of the Australian National University, ANU, and the University of Nottingham and the Australia Japan Foundation. So uh, what impact have the triple disasters had on the Japanese society? On 11 March, Japan was hit by unprecedented triple disasters, a massive earthquake with a magnitude of 9.0, and a 30 meter high tsunami, I will show you a picture later, and the explosion of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Daiichi means the first. They have the second one, but second one was okay. 
uh, damages have been tremendous. In a way, resident as well as local government in the affected area were ready for massive earthquakes because it was expected. Houses and buildings have been reinforced with seismically isolated structures. Severe damages from earthquakes alone have not been reported. Rather, it was a tsunami which exceeded people's preparation both physically and psychologically. There were seven tsunami waves over a six hour period after the earthquake, which occurred at 2.46 p.m. on March 11th, Friday. The first and the largest tsunami was recorded 26 minutes after the earthquake, which was up to 30 meters high, inundated uh, 433,000 square kilometers of land, which engulfed four-story buildings. As of 1st of August, uh, 20,631 people are confirmed dead or missing, and more than 100,000 uh, people are still living in evacuation centers or without homes. A 15-year-old junior high school student who lost her mother and friends and whose hometown, including her own house, was severely damaged, talked to a reporter from NHK, uh, that's Japanese National Broadcasting Company. Uh, she said that, I found nothing is eternal. Jinsei wa hakanai, that's what she said. Since just one wave of tsunami, uh, just one wave of tsunami changed everything. Lives are so transitory or temporary. Before 3-11, these should not be words of a cheerful junior high school student. However, after 3-11, this might be a typical notion of shared by many Japanese people, including children. It has been said that the Great East Japan earthquake of 311 was the kind of earthquake to come once every 1,000 years. The last being the Jogan earthquake, that is magnitude 8.3 to 8.6 in Heian period of 869 in Tohoku region. That was 1,142 years ago now. Now we know that this Jogan earthquake was followed by Sagami Musashi earthquake in Tokyo region in 878, nine years after the Jogan, followed by the Ninna earthquake, magnitude 8.0 in Kansai area in 887, in 18 years after Jogan. Also in that same time period, Mount Fuji erupted. Similar series of natural disasters were also recorded during the Edo period in the 17th century. Academic studies and researchers from archaeologists, archaeologist, philologist, and geologists show that these series of natural disasters have had great impact on societies at the time and caused changes in political frames. Ordinary people, including me, started to see the last 1,300 years of Japanese history, which we learned about in school, has been severely affected by natural <coughs> disasters. We clearly perceive that we are part of nature, and what we consider the history of human beings has been, in fact, the history of human beings severely affected by nature. Uh, the 311 earthquake and tsunami was followed by explosion of Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant managed by Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO. The nuclear power plant was located in Fukushima prefecture, but electricity generated by the plant is not for Fukushima, but for Tokyo region. Fukushima has been covered by Tohoku Electric Company, whose nuclear power plant Onagawa in Miyani Prefecture and Higashidori in Aomori Prefectures have not been damaged at all. People from Fukushima who are forced to leave and abandon their home and land or encouraged to evacuate have not used electricity gener generated by the TEPCO plant. It was us from Tokyo who enjoyed electricity generated by the Fukushima Daiichi. That means something to us. Now we also notice over 50 nuclear power plants have been built in such a small island country, Japan, 
with a long history of earthquakes and tsunamis. Many workers suffered from radiation maintained these plants even before 311. The company's risk control is that, not only company, but also Japanese government risk control is that they do not count risks which surpass their ability or assumption. Uh, last month, on July 22nd, the Asahi newspaper reported that uh, on March 15th this year, in Napoli, Italy, when survivors from Hiroshima and Nagasaki finished their testimonies in, la in a lecture on the atomic bombing, actually this event was organized by, before 311, by a Japanese NGO called Peace Boat. They were surrounded, I mean, these survivors are surrounded by local journalists, and they were challenged. Why does Japan, who suffered, atomic, who suffered from atomic bombs, hold that many nuclear power plants? The over 80-year-old survivors from Hiroshima and Nagasaki could not respond properly. What they could say was that, I am so sorry, but I cannot answer your questions since I have not studied about nuclear electric power generation or simply no comment. Later, these survivors to, said to the Asahi Shimbun that, I just vaguely believe what the government said. Since Japan does not have enough resources for energy, we need it. And I never ever challenged the safety <coughs> myth of nuclear power plant. These are not only the cases for those survivors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The Japanese society has rebuilt the country after the World War II using nuclear energies. The well-accepted discourse is that peaceful use of nuclear energy is different from nuclear weapons for fighting wars. Now, uh, those Japanese who have been indifferent to or silent to nuclear issues started to question what they, what they believed or premises on which they built their daily lives, including me and uh, we are in the struggle to, to have some answer. Then what lessons learned? Uh, in the world of scholars and journalists, serious discussions are going on related to the complex emergency that Japan experienced, especially on the first triple reactor meltdown after the Japan's March 11 earthquake and tsunami. This is very complex and it is beyond my capacity to cover and represent all the, and review all the discussions and argument. However, here uh, I would like to present one argument or analysis which attributed one of the many causes of the Fukushima nuclear accident to labor union issue. It is said that causal relationship between labor and management resulted in the loss of checking functions. Before 311, uh, protecting dispatched or temporary contact workers Haken Rodosha was one of serious social issues in Japan. Not only small companies, but also world famous leading companies have been blamed for using temporary dispatched workers to increase freedom to hire and dismiss workers, depending upon economic conditions. And now it is clear that this issue highly related to the risk management of a nuclear power plant. Uh, if all the workers for Fukushima Daiichi were the full-time regular worker of TEPCO, then labor union was responsible for their safety, and then they should make sure that their working conditions are safe. Then things should be, uh, things, especially risk management, would be totally different. But what uh, TEPCO's labor union did is that, uh, in reality, what they thought is dangerous was they are asking subcontractors. So uh, actually that I took my PhD from Tokyo University, it was in human security course. And then I was thinking about human security for overseas. And then what happened to human security to all those workers? And I have never ever thought of human security in Japan, especially in these workers. And I'm using electricity all the time. So, uh, uh, maybe I will talk later on human security issues. And then, uh, other lessons learned from the triple disasters. Uh, the aged, most vulnerable populations. I catch somewhere. Okay, I can catch somewhere. 
uh, 311 was unprecedented in many senses, especially in the sense that so many elderly populations were victims. One might not exaggerate to say that it must, it must be the largest disaster in the world history in which the ratio of the elderly among all affected was extremely high. As of April 8th, among 13,000 uh, 13, deaths, the ages of about 8,000 people were confirmed. The age groups of the victims of this 8,000 were as follows. 0 to 6 years old was 2.8 percent. 7 to 18 years old was 3.9 percent. 19 to 39 years old was 10 percent. 40 to 64 years old was 27.9 percent. And finally, over 65 years old, the rest, 55.4, uh, 55.4. The number of the dead aged over 65 years old was 4,398, uh, which comprised over 50 percent. This is extremely high compared with the demographic data before 311. The average ratio of a 65 year old in three prefectures, I mean Miyagi, Iwate, and Fukushima was 22 to 27 percent. So the death ratio is two times high in this age group. Traditionally, in the Sanrik region, where many tsunami had hit historically, there is an old word, tsunami tendeko, or tsunami tendenko, which means that uh, when the tsunami hit, you should mind, you should mind only yourself. Run away individually, don't care about other people. Many care workers were also killed by 311 tsunami when they tried to save the elderly whom they had been caring for. Tsunami Tendeko was applicable to a society where all the people are able to learn by themselves. It does not assume the extremely aging society like Japan or other advanced countries. And other lessons learned from the uh, elementary school. Uh, Schools have been thought to be safe havens when natural disasters hit, and it was proved to be true in some way. The number of the dead aged below 18 years old was 531, which comprised only 6.7%. If we look at the ratio of the victims of 7 to 18 year old group, it was between 2 to 4%. The average demographic ratio of this group was 11 to 12%. So the victim ratio of children of school age is fortunately low. This has been explained that the earthquake occurred at 2.46 p.m. on Friday, a weekday. Children were at schools, and they were able to evacuate to rooftops or high ground guided by teachers. Furthermore, it, looks, uh, it looked at the victim rate of the age group by three affected prefectures, Miyagi is 4.3 percent, Fukushima is 4 percent, while Iwate Prefecture is 2.1 percent. As you can see, the ratio of Iwate is dramatically low. Why? It is said that historically Iwate Prefectures had been suffered from huge tsunami many times. For example, Meiji Sanrik tsunami in 1896 and Showa Sanrik tsunami in 1933 both hit right after magnitude 8.2 to 8.5 earthquake. Remembering these disasters, schools in the region are famous for their education for disaster prevention. In addition, they have geographic advantages. Thanks to their deeply indented Rias coastline, Rias Kikaigan, like Sotus, high grounds are located near schools so that they can run away. However, there is a sad and shocking exception in Miyagi prefectures. The cases of Okawa Elementary School run by Ishinomaki City, its city owned. The school is located along a prefectural road near Shin Kitakami Ohashi Bridge, about five kilometers from the mouth of the Kitakamigawa River, so like five kilometers from the ocean. The two story school building was a modern structure and supposedly safe from tsunamis. Of the 108, 108 students aged 6 to 12 years old at the elementary school, 74 were killed. Uh, more precisely, 
68 were found dead and six were still missing uh, in last month. That means about 70% of the students became victims of the tsunami. Many of the 34 students who survived had been taken by their parents before tsunami hit in their parents' cars to safety. Of the school's 13 teachers and clerical staff members, 11 were present at the time. Among them, only one teacher survived, and nine were found dead, and one is still missing. The Board of Education of Ishinomaki City investigated the evacuation process and reported to the parents of the victims, who were furious. They said the tsunami hit the school 50 minutes after the earthquake. They have 50 minutes. But it took 40 minutes for teachers and staff members to start guiding students for evacuation. Students are engulfed by tsunami on their way to higher ground on the bank near the bridge, which is only 200 meters away from the school. The, the height of tsunami expected around the region was one meter high, while 311 tsunami in this region was over 10 meters. Ishinomaki City, as well as school, did not assume a tsunami to reach this region. And actually, the, this Okawa Elementary School was designed, designated as an evacuation center for the resident. The, uh, the reason the school explained was that uh, students were get, um, gathered at the schoolyard immediately after the earthquake, and roll was called to confirm that all the students were safe. And then some parents came to get their children. About 30 students were picked up, and teachers were busy in checking who were left, uh, who were still in the school. And some teachers were looking around the school building so that no, no students were left. The school was designated as primary education evacuation site, for neighborhood, so many neighbors came. And some teachers were busy in dealing with these neighbors, and then they have to decide where is the secondary evacuation site. Since the school's evacuation manual for tsunami mentioned to evacuate to higher ground, but did not specify where. So after the earthquake hit, the teachers uh, could not decide where to guide children. Uh, some teachers said, uh, up mountain outside of the school, and some teacher said it's too dangerous, so it's a huge discussion, and it took 40 minutes. And it should, be, it should be the leader's job to decide, but unfortunately, the principal of the elementary school was not there. He was absent to attend his daughter's graduation ceremony. On March 11th, there are many graduation ceremonies was going on for junior high school, and then the principal was one of them to attend. And in Oka Elementary School, the, this case, students who had been taken by their parents in their car to safety survived, whereas other schools in Iwate, where schools are located in higher ground, the children who lost their lives were those whose parents came to get. The children who stayed in the school were saved. The story of Oka Elementary School traumatized many schools near seashore, although situation varied from school to school. And schools uh, start to revise their emergency guidelines and try to specify evacuation route and site. And then uh, next lesson is that this is a disaster hit uh, advanced country. On March 9th, about eight days after, a Japan platform, uh, a consortium, 33 Japanese NGO, and the Japanese MOFA, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and Nippon Keidan Ren, Japan Business Foundation, providing humanitarian assistance for natural disasters and humanitarian crises. This is called Japan Platform. And this Japan Platform is organizing a first interagency meeting in Tokyo for international organizations and NGOs working for the victims of this earthquake and tsunami. I was chairing that uh, meeting. Then, an official from the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, came and said that he hoped that uh, the mistakes, uh, Japan, Japanese government does not make uh, some mistakes which US government made when Hurricane Katrina hit. Uh, he said US government had tried to do everything by herself, never asking for foreign aid. And also, he said, the government neglected civil society, and marginalized NGOs. 
then how was Japan? Maybe the evacuation, uh, evaluation might be the same with uh, Hurricane Katrina's case, but I think this is not special or peculiar cases for USA or Japan, but a case when just a hit advanced country. Japan has long been one of the top donors for international assistance, but has rarely experienced receiving aid itself. The government was often criticized by not welcoming overseas assistance. Also, they did not have experience to cooperate with international NGOs in domestic disaster. <coughs> However, I think this is not the unique case for Japan. Any donor, advanced countries are not accustomed to be recipient, and they are not in position to utilize UN system uh, for disaster, which they have been supporting for a long time. And so, and the government organization, which is center of relief activities, a cabinet office, whereas the government body related to NGOs, a foreign ministry, for there was a huge gap. And then uh, in the very beginning, because of this, uh, the Japanese government, in a way, inability, uh, there was no com completed data for the victims. Uh, if it's a, a disaster in, in other area, Maybe UN OCHA is the one that will really collect and give some appeal. And UN OCHA was in Japan, but they are kind of allowed only to make very small report. And then uh, due to the lack of a single nationwide system for disaster victim registration, and both national and local government were not able to respond adequately track of victims and the location of their temporary residence place. And so were NGOs. And in Japan, the baseline measurement of disaster damages is gauged by damages to houses, residents. And disaster victim certification are only issued to those who have been cert certified by a public agency that their homes have been dam damaged in various defined degrees and as casualties. So the person who do not fall into the category, uh, there was no way to find out. So there are many, many lessons. And then uh, using an example of one organization called AAR Japan, uh, in Japanese, Nami o Taskeru Kai. Actually, the, it was uh, established in 1979 as association to aid Indo-Chinese refugees when the many Indo-Chinese refugees came to Japan, Indochina Nami o Taskeru Kai. But in 1984, when the famine in Africa happened, the AL Japan started to work in Africa, so they took, and we took the Indo-Chinese, and then the name became Association to Aid Refugees. But for some countries, if the organization has a name of refugees, sometimes we are not allowed to go there. For example, in Cambodian crisis, uh, we have been working in Thai Cambodian border at that time, we, we were okay to help refugees. But when the Pari Peace Accord was uh, agreed, and then many refugees went back to Cambodia mainland, and so as many international non-governmental organizations, then when we tried to register organization to the government, the Cambodian government said, we do not have any refugees anymore. So we are uh, registered as the AAR Cambodia Committee so as uh, other Japanese organization called uh, Caring for young, young, young Refugees, they were also refused by Cambodian government, and then they changed their name, Caring for Young Khmer. The same thing is in the Chechen, Chechen assistance, or when we go to Myanmar or Laos. Then, uh, when the, we are celebrating a 20th year's anniversary, uh, keeping logo of AAR, we changed the name Association for Aid and Relief Japan, which does not have any <laughs> political connotation. <coughs> but we leave uh, Japanese Nammyo Taskeru Kai, it means Association to Aid Refugees. And then for us, this is the first time to do something in, in huge sense in Japan. And many uh, people from Tohoku area said, we are not refugees and they don't like to take any assistance from us first. But uh, somehow it worked. So uh, I would like to share with you that uh, experience of one organization. And then uh, this is also special in one case. 
there are many、uh, international NGOs, and AAL Japan is one of the biggest、uh, local NGOs. We have very big organizations、uh, Save the Children Japan,、uh, Care International Japan, and Adra Japan, and World Vision Japan, Plan International. They are also huge, but they are kind of international. So, very domestic one, including AAR or Shanti or Sotoshu Volunteer Association or Japan Volunteer Center. There's, see, all of them are involved in this uh, uh, relief activities in 311. This is about AAR Japan. Now we、uh, work in 13, actually, now in 15 countries and, and nine overseas offices. And AL Japan has no political, ideological, or religious affiliation, which is very important to us. And right now, we have like、uh, 50 uh, staff in Tokyo and 20 in、uh, Tohoku region, and then about 20 overseas. And then our fund is 50% is from the government, and 50% is raised in Japan. And then、uh, I will later tell you about that budget, but、uh, this Tohoku earthquake doubled our budget, yearly budget. Uh, this is the fifth pillar of the AL Japan's、uh, emergency assistance and mine and UXO action, mine action, and then assistance to、uh, persons with disabilities, and then infectious disease and advocacy.、Uh, because of this background, we decide in Tohoku area we will be focusing on that、uh, person with disabilities. Because we cannot cover the entire、uh, population, but we try to cover the entire region、uh, focusing on persons with disabilities.、Uh, this is explanation of that、uh, tsunami. <coughs> And this is about that、uh, Fukushima. It's still scary.、Uh, Uh, and this garbage,、uh, we call gareki. There was a big discussion、uh, that it's not garbage for the I mean, victims. For them, this is a memory of the house, a memory of their living, or a memory of their dead family. So, and then first, because this, is, this belongs to somebody, so first, just the government could not remove it because it's a personal property of somebody. And then, government took a new law, rule, and then it is allowed. Uh, in Fukushima region, this,、uh, removing this、uh, garbage is a I mean, big problem because of radiation. But not only Fukushima, but also Miyagi and Iwate, it's causing huge problems.、Uh, some chemicals, and then uh, uh, I don't know how to say in English, but it's very bad chemicals. And then many people are suffering from、uh, this, this section. Because, yeah. Then、uh, we don't know where to put.、Uh, this is like、uh, about 10 days after the tsunami. I took the picture. This is from the Soma city to、uh, Yamamoto Cho from Miyagi prefectures. And this is、uh, the same time I took this picture in、uh, Rikuzen Takada. It's the very center of the town. And now nothing is left. I mean, all this、uh, removal of Galeki was gone, Galeki was finished, but、uh, the government and the local government cannot decide whether they can allow people to build a city or not. So it's just nothing. This is not garbage. That, that,、uh, and then、uh, I could see the many tiny, pretty、uh, porcelains all over, and it was very sad. It looks like just an apartment from the、uh, distance. But can you tell? It's all gone until fourth floor. This is also Rikuzen Takada. It was so scary. And then,、yeah. So, both two buildings, like、uh, fifth stories, look s normal, but until fourth. So, the tsunami was as high as this height. The same time. So,、uh, although the Association to, for Aid and Relief Japan was,、uh, as I told you, tried to focus on that person with disabilities, 
but in the first stage, we have to do everything, uh, non-food item, food, and especially gasoline. Uh, this is the budget. Uh, we are having, we received donations from inside and outside of Japan about, about the Gokuen, 500 uh, million yen, <coughs> except in kind of service contribution. So it means plus in kind of contribution. And fund from Japan platform was uh, about Jokuen. So altogether, 1.5 billion yen. It's a huge amount of money. And this is only for that uh, Tohoku region in one organization. And then uh, using this money that we have been buying this diesel and kerosene, gasoline, and portable water, rice, uh, and bananas, milk, all of them, uh, and wheelchairs, and cotton. And then also we did soup kitchen. Uh, soup kitchen was takidashi. And then when the Kobe earthquake, takidashi last like uh, one month. By the time, uh, in one month, everything will be ready. And then takidashi was only for fun, sometimes for cake or for fun for children. But in Tohoku region, takidashi was, or soup kitchen was kind of uh, assisting people's life itself. Uh, even still now it's going on. In some uh, lo relocation centers, uh, even three months after, their food is, you know, omusubi, rice bowl, rice bowl, uh, morning rice bowl, and lunch, just one piece of bread, and dinner rice bowl. Pam, 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 gohan, 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 pam, pam, gohan, gohan, pam, gohan, gohan. This is their food in Japan, and it's, it's really amazing. And then many, uh, even foreigners, did their, their soup kitchens and ready to eat meals but it's beyond our capacities. Over there are gaps between that. Uh, uh, some uh, popular center, which is near and which the many journalists are there, and then always takidashi was going on. And some uh, remote area where not registered uh, collective centers, they have only uh, bread, 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 rice bowl, rice bowl, rice bowl. And then uh, two months after, when we delivered uh, milk to this collective center, uh, one man said, it's been a long time that I did take milk. And we didn't have milk at all. And we are shocked. In Japan, we are supposed to be advanced countries. But still, that uh, these people are lacking of milk and eggs. Yeah. And then uh, we did some repair or welfare facilities. And we gave some container house. Uh, of course, people cannot live, but uh, small uh, shops, they would like to do something, but it takes some time to rebuild their house. So they used uh, this uh, container house as their shop. And also that in Oshika Peninsula, Oshika Hanto, we did some shuttle bus service, so many uh, bus are gone. and repairing welfare facilities. And then also in Fukushima prefectures. Uh, compared with Miyagi and Iwate, the number of NGOs working in is low. Even the Japanese NGOs uh, not like to go to Fukushima. Uh, so uh, in Iwate and Miyagi, AL Japan is more or less concentrated on that uh, person with disabilities. When we deliver that uh, such food and non-food item, we try to focus on that disabled people center. But, and then this kind of uh, distribution, I mean, oops. Uh, we do this assistance to Fukushima, delivering these necessities to families. And in Miyagi and Iwate, other organizations, uh, World Vision Japan, Peace Fin Japan, and then other NGOs are doing this. But in Fukushima, no one is doing so, we did it in cooperation with Adura Japan. And AAR and Adura Japan cover the entire region. And then delivering daily necessities to families in temporary house and leasing, leased housing. And then to contribute to the economic recovery of the local area, uh, we try to 
pro, uh, pa, uh, procure these goods in local, uh, local uh, shokokai, shotengai, and we are trying to procure it. And then, uh, actually, in Japanese Red Cross Society, they raise huge amount of money. And then, <laughs> uh, there are two types. One is the money which goes directly to that uh, uh, victims. So this is called gienkin. The other type of the money is uh, money uh, other countries Red Cross sent to Japanese Red Cross Society. And this money is called shienkin, and they have to use by themselves, not giving to that victim themselves. So Japanese Red Cross Society decided to give uh, six set of electric utensils to all the displaced person, that is TV, refrigerator, microwave, some spot, rice cooker, washing machine. And one of our staff said that, uh, I don't have microwave. <laughs> 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 so that this uh, expensive one was covered by uh, National Red Cross. So Adra Japan and AAR covered less, more uh, cheaper one. <laughs> but since in Japan is such expensive country, still it costs a lot. Um, actually, that, uh, this is the overview of Fukushima Prefecture. Uh, before 311, about 2 million population. And then, uh, in outside of Fukushima Prefecture, 37 people are still evacuated. And then, uh, within 20 kilometers of Fukushima Daiichi, all these are called exclusion zone. And then, six towns and villages, and the population is 75,000. We don't think they can go back. So it means that entire town, including that the city hall was evacuated, mainly in Fukushima, Fukushima city. Then what is next for Fukushima? Uh, now we are doing just a non-food item, and we are trying to find out what to do. So the future recovery, uh, the Japanese and the international energy was quite swift, and, but aid continues, and nothing has changed in five months after that uh, incident. So we have to keep continue, and, but we don't know whether money will come <laughs> or not. And then, although we have money uh, for like Jugo Kuen, but once we spend it all, uh, we are not sure whether the Japanese people are still are ready to keep on uh, giving us money because our economy is going down. And then we got many uh, assistance from overseas, but as Professor Cindy first said, the people will forget and then, so we have to see what will going on. And then uh, there's still so many problems and so much problems. And then we have to keep company with, and then uh, many international organization, NGOs, are uh, originally working for overseas. And we have to go back to our own job to do. And then now, for example, AL Japan has sent four staff to uh, Kenya and Somalia. And then uh, people are more and more inward looking. And they try not to spend money for overseas donations. And then the Japanese NGO try to uh, change this mood of inwardness. I think this is our job too. I'm sorry it is too long. <laughs> and this will be, this will be the end. Uh, this is a Natsumatsuri. Uh, now it's a season for summer festival. And maybe some of you know, uh, August 13th to 16th is Bon Festival. And Bon in Buddhism, we believe that the, all the dead is coming back to their houses. And some houses are gone, and then some Buddhists said that uh, these dead people maybe cannot find where to go back. And then, so this festival is, in a way, uh, it's a play festival for Bon Festival. Uh, some scholars explain that uh, doing, or Tanabata is also a play festival for Bon Festival, doing Tanabata or other festival. Uh, showing to that ancestors, we are here and you can come back here. So even if that uh, their houses are gone, uh, all of them are gone, 
still, if the town try to keep the festival, the local festival, then still this uh, people have a place to come back. That's what we believe. Thank you so much. It's fascinating. It definitely wasn't too long. I <laughs> could have listened a lot more. Um, the floor is open for any comments or questions. Yes. <laughs> in, in the press here in Australia and internationally, there's been, there have been stories about how the central government of Japan <clears throat> has been raising radiation safety levels to unreasonable right. heights. And there have been stories of uh, women protesting outside the dive with samples of uh, soil. Could you tell us anything about public health monitoring of radiation levels, whether epidemiologists are getting in there? <clears throat> because one of the main debates in Australia is between the pro dukes who say radiation doesn't hurt you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the anti dukes who say it does. What's going on in Japan? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is it too early or are you beginning to monitor radiation sickness yeah. and radiation? Uh, especially the Fukushima local government started to monitor all the citizens of Fukushima. But uh, it's such a complicated process. First, uh, you have to answer, uh, by the way, that I'm attending national census yes. every <laughs> five years this time. <laughs> but uh, 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 first, just like national census, the government give you some uh, uh, this questionnaire. Where were you March 11th? And where were you March 12th? Where were you March 13th? And then uh, how long you were outside of the house? First, you have to answer all these questions. Who remember? Who remember? But it really depends. If you are inside, especially concrete house or a wooden house, or you are the farmer working all day long outside, especially Idate village, where that huge amount of nuclear thing follow. So uh, the government, I mean, Fukushima local government decide first to give some uh, questionnaire and find out that, how, uh, and then, they can identify, and also they knew which place is a hot place. So if one person is in here and outside, it's assumed that this person's radiation level is quite high. So they will pick up, and then they are starting from these people. And also, there are a whole body counter. Uh, we have some, I don't know, the measurement we have, but uh, it can only measure outside. And you have to do this whole body counter, but the number of whole body counter is limited. And then also it took like 30, 40 minutes per person. So it's almost impossible to do whole body counter to everybody. So first this questionnaire, and then we don't know how long does it take. Yeah. And uh, one of the shocking things is that there are uh, many books uh, which was reporting about that radiation of uh, workers for working for nuclear plant in peaceful time, not accident. Even the peaceful time, you need some uh, periodical checking. And then this periodical checking causing such a damage to the workers, and many of them are dying. And this kind of report was there, but I did not know that. And after 3.11, this book was in the household. And then many people started to know that, even not only 3.11, before 3.11, just uh, daily levels, uh, many, many workers, especially they are poor from marginalized area, or the person living in that uh, uh, Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant area, they are kind of working. But they are not full-time workers, and their radi radiation level was very high, and not all of them, but some of them already died, and there are some testimonies. So. Uh, I think that uh, Chernobyl is kind of going on in so Japan. It's still a very inexact picture, you just don't no, know no. stage. May no. I quickly ask a second question? There have also been disturbing stories about the Hibaku shark coming from Fukushima, people in other prefectures seeing number plates yeah. and isolating them. Kids at school being beaten up, yeah. not telling the it's parents, happening, yeah. finding out. Yeah. I think one mayor of one of the towns in Fukushima, Ken, uh, made a very strong, passionate speech about how mm -hmm. we must protect these people, mm -hmm. not harm them. We must not treat them as victims. 
Do you have further stories about that? Yeah, this is true, but uh, not all. But uh, and then uh, before I come here, there was another shocking, not shocking, but uh, in uh, Nagoya area there was local TV, and they have some uh, quiz uh, show, and then for the winner they are giving that uh, rice from some other region. And then the staff was preparing some uh, note that is not for real, just for checking, but it said it's sesium free or sesium, <laughs> sesium rice. This rice is lots of with sesium. And then by chance, uh, by mistakes, it was on TV. And then people from Tohoku were furious and huge demonstrations going on. But it's even the media <laughs> was doing it. So, Professor Knights, about your view of how the um, Japanese self defense forces um, before the big terms of disaster mm -hmm. uh, and recovery, it, it, they seem to play a very prominent role of the Japanese distance in Australia, and whether that is likely to have a uh, positive um, effect to the self defense forces, the specific role of the yeah. Japanese. Yeah, uh, they have been working so hard, and, the, and we responded very positive way, because that uh, uh, in the very first week or second week, there was no food. I mean that uh, uh, lifeline was cut, and the, all the main load was cut, uh, so that it's really difficult to deliver the rice to everybody. So uh, what they could do was just rice or bread, a piece of bread. So uh, the, this logistics was same to GATI, Self Defense Forces. They could only get one rice bowl a day because uh, the line was the same. And then, uh, of course, the government uh, uh, prioritized, prioritized uh, the victims. So they could work eating only one rice bowl, and it is touching. And they even give this to somebody else. And uh, of course, that, uh, some uh, anti-Self Defense Force said that Blah, blah, blah. But uh, many Japanese people have seen what they are doing. And then, uh, the furiously, TEPCO, uh, in one stage, they said it's too dangerous for them to deal with, so we would like to leave it to government. It means Self Defense Force can do that. But SDF was not ready for that kind of job. And also, not only SDF, but also Shobo uh, Tai. Emergency services or uh, like fire, yeah. They are also at code all over Japan, and they are doing the same. Yeah. And then nowadays, uh, the TV commercial for recruitment of Self Defense Force appeared on TV. That's shocking. <laughs> and then it was not there before 3 11. And then uh, obviously they are showing what they are doing three, after 3 11. And it was correct, and what it was right, but uh, it came. <laughs> yeah. Can I ask you a question? Could I ask you just to expand <laughs> on? You made a really interesting comment at the beginning of your presentation that you had studied human security yeah, right, yeah. Um, in your PhD, but you had never thought about human security in the context of Japan. Yeah. It was something that happened outside of mm -hmm. Japan. And I'd be interested in your reflections mm -hmm. on that now, mm -hmm. having witnessed and worked mm -hmm. um, yeah, with uh, this disaster. Yeah. Uh, more precisely, I was thinking in human security in Japan, but uh, uh, I was sometimes do some advisory board for the MOFA, Japanese MOFA, mm. uh, because in Australia, in Japan, and Canada is a kind of advocate for human security. And then uh, I thought that uh, uh, human security is only for, I don't know, popular among some Gaimusho people or some people in small community, but never ever in the main Japanese people. They have never ever thought or heard human security. So uh, I thought that maybe Kosei uh, Rodojo Health Ministry or everything, everyone should do or locate, uh, uh, identify Japanese uh, internal problem in the terms of human security. That's what I thought before 3 11. I have never ever thought of that workers of uh, atomic power plant. And then I was one of the person who are 
indifferent or uh, no, we're too naive. Mm -hmm. And then I was very active in the landmine campaign. And then I was in Kosovo during 1999, uh, NATO bombardment. I was there. And uh, depleted uranium was there. And I was aware of that uranium. And I was in Kosovo, and I thought I might be affected. But uh, in that way, I knew this kind of radiation. But I never thought about that, uh, Japanese workers. And um, after the, I mean, 3-11 happened, I thought that if you really want to be, make some peaceful society, you really have to care about everybody's human security. If you neglect somebody's human security, then it will damage everything. Mm -hmm. At least you should try to do cover everybody, otherwise, of course it is impossible to cover everybody's human security, but at least you should not neglect uh, well, you should not marginalize any population, then look at what happened to Japan. I mean, it's, uh, we cannot return to the date of before mm. March 11. It's too late. Mm. So that's what I think. It's interesting because it seems as well you're sort of saying that often we think about human security as something that happens, we worry about in relation to other people, and we yeah. don't think about yeah. it in our own environment, which is, is a really interesting way to rethink about what security means, mm -hmm. what human mm -hmm. security means. Mm -hmm. Is it a problem uh, within <coughs> the aid organisations? Um, are there some that uh, would have difficulty and would not wish to cooperate with uh, with K Dunrin and uh, and Gun uh, or, or are all the NGO organisations happy to be involved in this way? Yes, uh, actually, that Japan platform is having some difficult. We thought we will have difficulty. In the end, we are not. But first, we thought we would be have difficulties because uh, Japan platform is established for overseas uh, cooperation. And then our fund is coming from Japanese government and Japanese Keidanen, mainly for natural disasters. Uh, but uh, not for the disasters inside of Japan. Uh, in Japan, Ministry of Foreign Affairs does not work, of course, because they are Foreign Affairs Ministry. And then Keidanen is trying to help not Japan platform, but uh, Shakyo, Zen Shakyo, uh, National Social Welfare Council. So they have a different route to help. But uh, uh, since we have some close connection with many companies, when the March 11 start, and then Japan platform said, we will do something, then they started to uh, donate their fund directly to Japan platform without uh, looting Keidan Ren. So the money was huge. Then that's why we are applying for Japan platform money to do many things in Fukushima. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is actually the first time that many Japanese companies do not give. Of course, they give uh, Japanese Red Cross Society, but they have some options for the first time. Before uh, March 11th, uh, Japanese Red Cross Society is almost the only one uh, candidate for them to donate money. So, but civil society is kind of expanding in Japan, I guess. So, so, so am I right in thinking then that, that Japanese companies contribute directly to Japan platform, right. not through, through KW? No, directly. Okay. Because the, the, I think the, the publicity for the meeting today was a bit misleading because I thought it gave the impression that there was actually a coalition of three things, the NGOs, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and, and KW, which that would be surprising, but that's not the case. Uh, actually, this uh, con consortium is uh, built for international aid. International. Yeah, for international aid. Yeah, but Gai uh, Show uh, is uh, assisting us in a way that uh, they are giving us some information, or we are helping them because there are many NGOs going to Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and we will take care of them. But uh, we might get fund from Gai Show for Tohok in very near future. That uh, its political discussion is going on, and it's their first time to <laughs> spend their money for, I mean, internally. Yeah. So, but uh, we are working, and it might happen very soon. Could you comment on the uh, credibility of, of the government and the company with regard, especially to um, safety from the radiation? And has the credibility increased over time? Um, and
And it, can you think of any ways in which um, more credible information, especially about personal safety, um, given the radiation dangers, um, can be improved in Japan? Uh, credibility that we almost lost our own. Uh, no, we, not so many people trust Japanese government anymore. And then, uh, actually, we think, or well, it is said that uh, not so, maybe no specialist, and no uh, radiation specialist in the government. Most of the country, advanced countries, who have the atomic power plant, they also do have atomic bomb. So it means it's very highly political and security issues, so politicians have to deal with it. But for Japan, this uh, atomic issue is only peaceful issue, and then the government doesn't have to do anything. I mean, it is a job for the uh, companies. Of course, there are some uh, MITI, which is in charge of that, uh, the ministry, which is in charge of this atomic issue, but still, they are economic ministry and not uh, self defense or something. So, uh, risk management, the ability of risk management for nuclear issues is very, very low, or no specialist. That's very sad things. And also, mm -hmm. there are some specialists in academic area, but they are kind of marginalized, labeled as uh, like left-wing socialist yeah, or something yeah, like so that. Yeah. As, they, as international expertise, I, mean, I know many institutions, many individuals have offered their help yeah. and so forth. Has that improved the situation at all in terms of? I think that uh, first, Japanese government just say no, because as I told you, as uh, they don't have any experience as a recipient, but now I think that they are getting more help because they knew it's beyond their capacity beyond their capacity. Mm -hmm. And it's also, it's our, we think that it's our mistakes. Yes. We are, most of the Japanese, just quiet. And then this very anti and pro nuclear stuff, people are fighting. Mm -hmm. And then most of the, I mean, majority of the Japanese people just are using electricity. And then this happened. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now we noticed, yeah. and it's a paying such a high prices. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Khan has said that um, if you try, if you can interpret it properly, that we'd like to see nuclear power abolished. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you really think there's any credibility in that? It seems to me that the all the electric power companies and all the heavy industry mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. very much committed to continuation yeah. of nuclear power. And, and then, I think the government is too. But what do you think there, there could be a change? Or is some sort of uh, change of thinking within? Of thinking, yes, yes. But um, uh, unbelievably, that some big companies are trying to sell their nuclear power issue to Bangladesh or <laughs> Vietnam, and it's it, uh, how how could they do that? And then, but yeah, but uh, uh, more and more people started to say no. Of course, we knew that you cannot stop atomic power plant tomorrow, but in, you know, how many years? I don't know how many years to take, but still we are trying to move that side. If Japan doesn't do it, Korea will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you know that uh, China, that uh, the railways accident was so scary. Mm -hmm. And then uh, some people say that uh, Japanese uh, Shinkansen was trying to sell but they did buy only part, and then it should be the system, security system, but China didn't buy security system, but they just bought some parts. And same thing with the atomic nuclear power plant in China, and it might happen, same thing, sooner or later. And then that uh, their power plant is all coastal line, and always wind is coming from inland to even now that we are suffering from COSA, yellow sand, always wind is coming, so we might get another one if China did something. And we cannot, we do not have any right to blame because we have done already. And without uh, 
giving them without giving any caution to Korea or China or other neighboring countries, we have just do it. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So we cannot blame China at all if, if some even if something happened. Yeah. If there's one further question, I'm conscious that Professor Osa has actually flown overnight and um, is still standing, which I think is, is pretty good for this public yeah. lecture. But maybe if there's any, is, is there any final questions before we let her take some well-earned rest this evening? Yeah, sorry that my language is not that good, oh. and then I wish <laughs> that I could <laughs> speak in. Well, let's call yeah, the please. proceedings um, <laughs> to, to a conclusion tonight. Yeah. And join with me, please, in thanking Professor Oster. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you.